Hi everyone, I'm here at South End on Sea and I'm hoping to see some divers. We had a quick look around from the foreshore and we've now come down onto South End Pier, the longest pleasure pier in the world. We were only a few miles east of Leon Sea, where I filmed the Brink Geese a few weeks before, so it wasn't surprising to see a few here. There was a raft of great crystal greaves way out to sea too. Halfway along the pier, Roy spotted a female long-tailed duck, a first in Essex for me, and only one of a handful I've seen in the wild. These ducks are very much a sea-dwelling species that visits our coasts in winter, although they do occasionally turn up on reservoirs inland. I've now reached the end of the pier, and as usual, there's a big flock of turnstones and the Mediterranean girls flying around, so I'm going to get some footage of them. There's also a big crowd of people here, and they're here for the same reason I am, and that's to see if they can find the white-billed diver. As is quite often the case in winter, the slipway was full of turnstones. Some were having a wash. Others seem to be pecking off invertebrates from the slipway. There were Mediterranean gulls there too. This one was starting to get its black summer head plumage. The weather was turning, it was starting to get a bit misty and drizzly, and I had a look round the south and west side of the pier. The only birds close enough for the camera were great crested greaves. So I headed back to the slipway and I decided to film the turnstone some more. Most were tucked up for a nap. I've got some photos too, one peering over the slipway and another in the flop. I captured this one flying in. and another looking over the flock too. Film some close-ups of the Mediterranean gull. And a turnstone. Then a pair of Dunlin flew in and joined the turnstones on the posts by the slipway. This grey seal also came in close to the pier. While I was sat there, the ornithologist David Darrell Lambert arrived, and it didn't take him long to spot the white billed diver. It was in front of the wreck of the SS Montgomery. I'm pretty sure I managed to film it here, but it was too far off to be 100% sure of my camera. But thankfully, David kindly let me look through his scope, so I definitely saw it, and I ticked off a new species for me, or lifer to give it the bird a term. Then a shag appeared right in front of the pier, but disappeared after diving. before reappearing again 10 minutes later and disappearing again. The Dunning had now gone to sleep with the turnstones. I got some more photos of the turnstones too, including these two disagreeing and another sequence of a turnstone landing and a nice portrait of one that came in close. I decided to go up to the top floor and join the masses as the white-billed diver had started to come in a bit closer. It was still a way off, but just about in range of my camera setup. It then came out of a crab. Which caught the attention of a cormorant as it finished swallowing it. And the diver did not take kindly to it. Having safely swallowed its meal, it had a good flap of its wings. back to looking beneath the surface for its next meal. It drifted slightly closer before it came out of a flatfish of some kind. Which it quickly swallowed.
The white-billed diver is a rare bird in the UK, especially here in the southern half of England, and this bird is only the second ever recorded in Essex. The species breeds up near the Arctic Circle, and when they migrate south for winter, a small number of those from Russia head down past Norway and end up in the deep water in the North Sea, including off the coast of the UK. But most of the sightings of this species are in northern Scotland, so it's a real treat to see them here in Essex. On the other side of the pier, the white-billed diver's closest relative, a great northern diver, was drifting by. The weather conditions got worse, so we retreated to the lower floor. And as the white-billed diver drifted slowly closer, I got some more footage. This is the rarest and largest of the four diver species usually found around the UK, with its large size distinguishing it from the red-throated and black-throated divers. The closely related Great Northern is similar in size, but slightly smaller on average, and the white-billed diver's beak is straight on the upper side, which gives the impression that the bill is curved upward slightly. And of course the beak is paler in colour, with no dark tip, and this was the feature to look for on this bird in the field, along with the larger pale area on the head. In the breeding season, the beak goes straw yellow, which gives them the other name, the yellow-billed loon. The white-billed diver is a bird of deep water, certainly more so than other divers, so it's usually found away from the shore, so this mile long pier was quite handy for seeing this species. This was as close as the white-billed diver would come, but a great northern diver came in close enough to fill the frame at 3000 mil something that would have been a highlight of any normal down south end pier, but of course it was upstaged by its real relative. The white bill diver then started to drift back out to sea, and the pier was about to close, so we started the mile long walk back down the pier in the pouring rain. But we were happy I'd seen this rather excellent rare bird. Thanks for watching.